the map control in Dundas BI is so extensive that it could almost be a standalone product in itself. Few, aside from our wizard of a developer, Ryan, actually know all there is to know about the Dundas BI map control. So let's go through it. I'm gonna walk you through some of the cool features that the map supports, and I don't know about you, but I bought a map from Bono, and what a waste it was. All the streets had no name, and I still haven't found out what I'm looking for. I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. So I for one love maps. I'd be lost without them. So that you don't get lost, let's start with a few of the basic elements in this data visualization map that you should understand before going too deep. Every map has land masses on them or areas defined by boundaries on all sides, such as continents, countries, states, provinces, lakes, zip codes. These are gonna be the core to pretty much every map you use. Now an obvious question is where do these shapes come from? Well, Dundas BI uses something called a shapefile to draw the maps that we use, and we deliver a large number of shapefiles as part of the product. The problem is that your needs might not be aligned with what we provide. For example, are you interested in visualizing the waterways of West Philadelphia? Odds are we're not gonna have a map for this, but luckily you can provide your own maps and load them into Dundas BI. I actually did a whole video on this topic called There's a Map for That, Game of Thrones Edition, which goes into this topic. Check it out if you're interested. To summarize it though, essentially we use something called an ESRI shapefile, E-S-R-I, and these are readily available through governments, universities, and other providers, most of the time for free. You shouldn't have much trouble finding what you're looking for if you need something specific. Now next is an element that we call symbols. Symbols are locations or points on a map, such as cities or offices, or maybe even something like a vehicle or a plane if you have a GPS device. Like shapefiles, they can come pre-populated as a resource, like the world map, which would come with city level maps as default. You can also load your own using latitude and longitude coordinates if you've got that in your database and they'll be generated dynamically. This is really useful as you can load your own information such as client location and see the distribution. Now the third element is called paths. Paths are a linear feature such as roads or rivers or straight lines drawn by connecting a pair of symbols. You might want to show the travel distance between two objects as a line on a map. And like symbols, paths can come from a resource as well, or you can simply have them dynamically generated by providing a pair of symbols and we draw the line between them. So those are the elements that you need to understand. Now what can you do with them? Well, there is data binding, which is what comes into play next, where essentially we match elements with names in your database and change them depending on the values. For example, shape color binding is the most common thing you'll see where each shape is bound and colored by data. This could be continent level or all the way down to something like a postal code if you wanted it, depending on the map resource being used. By the way, Dundas BI will automatically look at your data and choose an appropriate resource for you when you first select map visualization. Also, with shapes, you can set the default colors, borders, and backgrounds, etc. There's a ton of properties you can use. Now, with symbols, you have the option of both size and color binding to display your values. Paths are also available to bind thickness and the color of the path. Furthermore, just like shapes, both symbols and paths have a significant number of properties available. It's best to explore yourself and see what's there, but you'll find that you can customize visual elements like the marker being used or the stroke pattern. There's a ton of options. Also, if you're using symbols, you can produce something called a heat map rather than merely dropping individual points on the map. The heat map is pretty cool because it'll create a colored weather-like map style where your data is based on values. You can see the color intensity being used rather than specific points. Definitely a useful option. For those interested in binding options, you can also choose from different data distribution methods like continuous, round continuous, equal distribution, equal interval, round interval. Having these different methods will help you pull out various characteristics of your data that you want to visualize. I won't get into what each one of these means, there's a full article on it, 
but definitely play with them because it can really help you. You can also play with some of the neat visual options like playing with the projection that's being used. Projections modify the way locations and shapes are displayed on your screen and can give a very different presentation depending on what you're after. Now, depending on your use, maps can be interactive and allow for zooming and scrolling, or you can keep this disabled and allow the user to be focused on what you want to show. They can also allow for hierarchy based drill down, just like any other visualization control. In this example, you can see that we can drill down from various levels right to specifics. Notice how the map is automatically loading an appropriate map resource based on the new level of detail available. Now you've also got map providers, which allow you to connect third party providers to display the map content. This is often used with zooming and scrolling into symbols, where street and city level detail will help users understand the symbol location rather than just having a blank color around it. You can see that multiple providers are supported, so take your pick and see which map provider works best for you. These providers are also useful because you can bring in additional detail like surface geography to your maps using something called a tile set. I'll definitely explore that area as well. There's more. The map, like other visuals, will work with dynamic data and layers as well. So you can allow your users to see what they want to see on the map. You can also choose labeling, or maybe have labels only appear for bound visual elements. We've also got diagram support, which is a little bit different, where we don't use geographical data, but you can literally draw something like a floor plan or the human body or seats at a stadium or a shop floor. You might even do something like a process flow diagram. The visuals are completely endless. And finally, those who still want more, well, you've got APIs which will give you programmatic support over everything so that you can write your own features. Go for it. It's crazy how much capability is packed into one little control, isn't it? I hope this guide gives you some ideas of the types of things you might like to try out on your own. Now, are you liking the idea of going deep and adding a lot of capability to your content? Well, check out a video that I did called Adding Weather Data to Dundas BI is a Breeze. This will show you how you can pull web-based data and give you even more power over what you're putting into your dashboards. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.